Tonight I wanted to talk to you guys about a shoe that is near and dear to my heart. It is not a new shoe by any means. It is a classic. It is the Ultra Lone Peak 5. And there on your screen you can kind of see it getting muddy, getting dirty. Just right off the bat, this shoe, the Lone Peak series, is classic to Ultra. It's got that classic shape and we'll get into some of the specs and details and exactly what makes Ultra different in this video. Um, but it is a shoe that is uh, designed to get muddy, you know, go ripping through some trails, has a legacy, and there's a reason why this is a preferred shoe for trail runners, ultra marathoners. So this is actually not my first ultra shoe. Uh, I actually started out with the Provision 4. I mean, take a look at that, that old colorway there. Uh, but here you can see that the difference between ultra and other shoes is its foot shaped toe box and i'll compare it to one of my other shoes here comparing it to this Saucony endorphin speed one you can definitely see a difference in shape as far as the toe box goes there you can see where your toes might get a little bit pinched in the Saucony, you know with this kind of more traditional shape versus say the ultra which promotes a little bit more of splaying of the toe and according to ultra that natural splaying is designed to help keep your balance your stability especially on the trails and overall comfort while running next thing about ultra is going to be its zero drop meaning that it's the same width as far as the midsole from the front of the shoe to the back of the shoe and according to ultra encourages a more natural gait to reduce overall injury and increase comfort the next feature of Ultra is this signature cushion. In this case, it's the Ultra Ego, but by now there are several other Ultra foams and most of them are really concentrating on being very, very cushioned and protective of the foot. And what's interesting about Ultra is that there is gender specific shoes. Uh, and with the toe box, it goes for the standard width toe box which you see here more the original and there are other toe box widths which are a little bit more narrow and there are other models of ultra that you don't see here that are even more narrow yet the width of the middle of the shoe can vary in width as well finally most of the ultra trail shoes do have a fairly aggressive outer and here you can see it says trail claws right here which is kind of a cool a uh, feature of Ultra, including this stone plate, which protects your foot from rocks and ruts over the trails. It really gives a nice, good lockdown feel over slippery terrain. And I will say that these shoes I have run my first Ultra Marathon in. As you can see, they're built solid like a rock. These shoes are meant to go the distance and their buildmanship and craftsmanship is just second to none. They're really well built. And moving into some of the specific features about the Lone Peak here is here on the front, you can see where there will be an attachment for, for a gator that will also connect to the Velcro piece in the back to protect the shoe and your foot from excessive dirt, rocks, and mud. And like I mentioned before, this is Ultra's original foot shape, meaning it's the widest of the foot shape they have, uh, really allowing those toes to flail out and splay out, uh, giving you a bit more of a balanced cushion. And I can attest to that because um, during my runs with this shoe, uh, there have been some unpredictable situations and I was kind of glad that I had a nice wide shoe that made me feel a little bit more balanced out there. And even though this is a very thick material for the upper i will say that it actually does breathe pretty well and here on the medial side there are ventilation ports and additionally in the front also taking a feel of the actual shoe you can see how quite non-rigid this shoe is and just gives it a little bit more of that natural feel over surfaces and moving down to that midsole of course that's that ultra ego it is 25 millimeters in the back and 25 in the front for a nice zero drop and a decent amount of cushion and the surfaces that you're primarily going to be running on here are probably going to be soft being trail being mud being just you know really loose terrain these are not expected to be going on the roads very much it's primarily a trail shoe speaking more of that missile there are inner flex grooves that do allow the shoe to work with the outer as far as the midsole and the uh, metatarsal phalangeal joint of your foot where it bends naturally to allow a little bit more responsiveness and flexibility of the shoe as you adapt to various terrain one of the things about the lone peak 5 that i will say is how 
padded it is. Uh, there's actually quite a bit of padding and um, one of the first things that uh, led me to buy this shoe was its step-in comfort. Uh, I was immediately impressed with just how thick the cushioning is both for the midsole and as well as the foot and you know the lockdown of the upper with the lacing and the heel counter in the back uh, actually makes for a very comfortable fit. Uh, it doesn't feel cumbersome or tight uh, or, um, or overly loose. It really is just, um, I almost want to say the perfect fit, um, the Lone Peak here. So that's why I'm kind of bringing it out of the archive and just talking about this shoe. And I know that uh, they've had several iterations since the five. I believe they're up to the seven now. Um, but I'm looking and I'm not seeing um, a whole lot in the, in the way of drastic difference between this uh, current mo this model here and the current model, meaning that Ultra has found a recipe for success and is sticking with it. Um, and then now moving on to a little bit more of that heel counter, you can see that there's really not too much rigidity or structure to it at all. And that is really depending on you know your natural heel uh, and then of course the nice fit of that shoe. There is a nice deep heel pocket here in the back uh, and then just above that is some nice thick padding to really lock in that heel. Another feature that I'll say is its ability to drain water. Now in the video you can see I'm going through some, some mud, some water, uh, it just drains completely out of here. I remember during my Ultra, we had a river crossing that we actually got to do, which was actually quite refreshing, FYI. Um, and we did that a few times, and I do uh, remember thinking, oh, this shoe is gonna get so heavy, and it's just gonna feel so cumbersome with all that water in there. But I gotta say, within a quarter mile, it felt completely dry. And um, I gotta say that, um, the drainage ability of the Lone Peak is actually pretty remarkable. And another feature that I want to mention is this insert of the shoe. Um, Ultra is saying that this is six millimeters and um, I have no reason to disagree. And there it says ortho light right here along the side. This is a quality insert. I mean, by any measure, uh, not just for the shoe, but just in general, uh, this actually adds quite a bit of um, comfort to the overall instep feel and the uh, durability of the shoe and that is such a good build quality and it just feels very nice and plush when you're riding upon it. Now that the insert is out of the shoe you can kind of see one of those drainage ports right there. Here you can see that there is a fully gusseted tongue for the tongue of the shoe. The Ultra Lone Peak 5 is weighing in at 10.5 ounces for a men's size nine, meaning that it's not the lightest trail shoe on the market, but for the build quality and its overall expected usage being um, meant for longer distances. And I'm thinking more of the ultra marathon category uh, where you're really wanting to emphasize comfort and durability over the long period, uh, more so than speed overall is kind of what uh, what I believe Ultra is getting at with this particular shoe. Having said that, 10.5 ounces is not a huge amount and it's not that much different than some of the trainers out there. So it's actually fairly comparable. There might still be some of these laying around the internet. You never know. I just did a quick little search and there are some websites that do still have the Lone Peak 5. Um, they're on sale all over the place and you can definitely find them well off of that full original retail. Which brings me to another point it might not be such a bad idea to look at an older iteration of an awesome shoe and I'm just using the Lone Peak 5 as an example here but the same theory can apply across the board you might not always have to buy a brand new shoe you might be able to get the previous year's iteration and to your advantage that shoe has already been worn and reviewed and thought about a lot by the time that you arrive to it one year later. Um, having said that, most websites do have a clearance section and you can find the previous year's model for a lot cheaper than you would ever find at full price. And all that's doing is making room for the newest iteration of the shoe. Chances are it's going to be perfectly fine and if you're just arriving to that particular shoe and just arriving to that particular line, well friend it's a brand new shoe to you so look at you saving money and being swifty so i hope this finds you well and i just wanted to touch base with you about a classic shoe here that i really enjoy and you would just consider clicking like clicking subscribe and i'll catch you in the next one